Dr. Michael DeAmos, and I want to welcome you to Renovatio Leadership Institute, and specifically to this OP lab, or Optimal Performance Lab, where we're going to be exploring the concept of innovation and failure. So we have a special guest that's going to be here on Zoom. His name is Dr. Samuel West, and he's actually the curator for the Museum of Failure. Yep, the Museum of Failure. He's going to be talking to us about the connections between innovation and failure and how major companies have innovated, but they failed miserably at it. It coasts attention to how failure can actually forward and empower you to achieve higher levels of performance. So welcome to the OP Lab and check this interview out. It's going down right now. Hi, Dr. West. Hello, How are you doing hello. today? Very well, good. Uh, no problem. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, do this interview with uh, me here at uh, Renovatio Leadership Institute and the Optimal Performance Lab. Now, what I want to do is just briefly tell people a little bit about you. Now, you're a pretty interesting individual, and, and I think that's why I'm, I was so excited about this interview. Um, so you, you, um, you're a business psychologist. Um, you do creativity research, and you actually did your research on the field of work and play. Yeah. So okay. um, Yeah, so the, my background, clinical psychology. Then I, um, I moved on into uh, organizational psychology uh, for the past eight, ten years. Got my PhD in that uh, with a focus on innovation. And like you said, uh, the, the, my original research was, was focused on how a playful work environment how a playful approach to your work tasks. Sounds um, fun. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> how, how that actually, actually encourages um, and fosters uh, both you know, creativity and innovation. Okay. It and, probably likely imp influences <clears throat> employee engagement too, right? Absolutely. I mean, that wasn't my focus, but that's definitely one mm. of the parameters that it affects. And then from that research, because play uh, – because what – I don't know how deep we want to go into this, but um, please, when you <clears throat> please when you when you think about play, um, play what makes play magical is that you you enter sort of it's called like this I, know, I can't even remember what it's called like the domain of play, the sphere of play. You go into right. this magical sort of temporary uh, sphere where uh, things are not for, not real, like it's made up. So okay. you're playing. When you're playing cowboys and Indians, no one's going to kill you, you know? Right, right. Um, the imaginary <clears throat> world. Yeah. When you play soccer and you, make, you, you, you um, um, score a goal, nothing changes. It's just somebody who makes up, you get one point, you know? Mm. Um, <clears throat> so um, when, you, when you enter this, sort of inter this playfulness, you're, you're temporarily protected from the consequences of real life. So... In, in a playful um, um, interaction with you, I could, I could like come up to you, I could like hit you on the back or I could say <laughs> something to you that's kind of like, wow, what are you doing? Like uh, something that, that I wouldn't be able to do sort of in a serious business context because I would be Correct. So what play does is it protects us from uh, us adults and, even, and that's it's the same applies to you know, juvenile animals as well. Or any any organism that we it protects us from the natural the regular real life consequences now what happens then in play is that it opens because of this we all we know this in a playful state of mind we can we can uh, explore and experiment with novel thoughts nor mm. novel approaches and behavior so it makes us very open to experimentation okay, but it's from the, the research on play that the idea for the Museum of Failure was born. Ah, you got a long okay. answer. <laughs> and just our purpose is driven by, you know, just doing so many different things that you try or different interests. So I'm assuming that you've kind of created your life around the things that you're passionate about. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the only way to go, I think. I mean, seriously, I, I can't. I mean, <clears throat> life is too short to... Uh, People say life is too short to drink bad wine or life is too short <laughs> for this or that. <clears throat> Seriously, mate, I work, you know, 10, 12 hour days. If it was something I didn't enjoy doing or didn't find meaningful, I, there's no way I'd do it. I mean, 
I just get a paycheck, do as little, ch- check in, do as little as possible and check out. But I mean, it's a choice. And um, do you think that you're making a difference in the world with what you're doing? Um, I think it's sort of maybe I don't want to I don't want to stretch it too far. What I do hope is that the museum of failure and the message of accepting failure as part of progress and innovation. What I do hope is that it'll have an effect not only on the on the individual who comes to visit the museum or reads an article about it that they understand that, hey, maybe they should be less afraid of failure and, and, and have more courage to do, you know, to, to, to take meaningful risks. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's in the, in the small sort of area. Um, and also, I think it's interesting to see how um, nonprofit organizations, charity organizations have uh, reached out and expressed what a, what a huge problem uh, fear of failure is within that sector. I think um, it's in every sector because I do a lot of coaching yeah. and the biggest thing that holds people back from, uh, you know, from growing and, and achieving that higher level of performance is the fact that they're too afraid to fail at anything. Yeah. yeah. We, and it's, it's like, th- it's like this, you, you go to a job, you've got 30 days. If you don't do well in 30 days, that means you're not good enough. You're yeah. out. And I think it's like, you know, in school, the same concepts, it's like, the idea of failure is it's backwards. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. No, <laughs> but you'll I, I, tell no, me I, more I, about that. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I totally, I mean, the, 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 we've got fit. We, what, what we've done in society, um, whether it's in school, you know, higher uh, secondary education, etc., or <laughs> we've glorified success and we've demonized failure. So, yes. And, 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 and it, it means that um, success and failure are the opposite um, uh, of, of each other. And, and in some cultures, I mean, in the, in the United States and in a lot of European countries, we still have a certain appreciation of failure. But in many cultures, it's, real, it's even um, harder for people to understand the role of failure for progress. And then there's even a stronger sort of block uh, um, that, 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 that prevents us from taking risks that need to be taken. So what you're saying, so let me just get this okay. out here. <laughs> I want to quote you on this, that failure is necessary for innovation and growth. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it's not, it's compl- if, you, if you just, yeah, yes, definitely. If you, if you just back up, you know, take a little wider perspective for a moment mm-hmm. and you look at why like what's the basis of life on this planet right so it's genetic failure mutations this is um true. so the the whole the, i mean the whole premises for life uh, life is that there are billions and billions of failures <laughs> where the, and where, you know the the only a small, small portion that's actually survived, and that's us. Um, hmm. And yet we demonize failure. It's thanks to all of those dead, you know, prehistoric humans and, and other organisms that we're alive today. I know I get a bit, I get a bit, I don't know, existential about the whole no, thing. No, I'm, I'm with you because I, <laughs> I read a lot of existential stuff. I'm all about Viktor Frankl's work. Actually, my work focused on uh, the um, impact of employee engagement on the meaning of work and meaning in life. So I looked at more performance, but the purpose and, and passion, all that stuff is related. So I'm with you. I, I like, I seriously, I, I, I want to clap, but we're, we're, you know, we're in our meeting. So I'll clap afterwards. <laughs> I'll clap. I'll clap. <laughs> so let me just ask you a few more questions. Yeah, um, so, you kind of told me a little bit about the, the, you know, the idea or the, this, this, the museum of failure. Was this also something that, for instance, maybe was it a vision that you had um, in a small corner of your mind that maybe it took time or years for you to, to grow into and develop? Or was it something that just, how did it come about? Like, boom, like um, what happened? Um, so I, like I, like I mentioned earlier, I was um, interested in, exploration and experimentation <clears throat> and how that drives innovation and how do we 
given my psychology, clinical psychology background, I was looking at how, which behaviors in organizations uh, uh, would facilitate exploration and, ex um, and exploration. Um, anyway, so that, I thought that was fascinating. Um, and a lot of that had to do with creating an environment where you can uh, learn together from your mistakes and be open about both, you know, um, when things go right, when they celebrate success, absolutely. And then also when things go wrong, that mm. there's no pointing the finger and finding scapegoats where you, where you learn from it together as a group. Um, Cause that's what kids do when they play. They, 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 something happens. Oh no, we got to change the rules now because this didn't work or we've got to, you know, it, it's always flexible. Um, the rules are always flexible. I just want to, and then, and then what happens is um, the, so get, that's sort of the, the basis. I didn't know what I was, I didn't really know where I was headed with that. Mm -hmm. I also knew that I didn't, I was tired of workshops, books, seminars. Um, I wanted to find a new way to communicate research findings. I mean, you know, as I do, I mean, there's a lot of research being published that no, no one reads. I think it's um, just because it's, they can't understand it sometimes. No, it's not. I, mean, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> even, like, I, I read these these academic journals, I was like, why do they have to write it so impossibly difficult, you know? Um, I'm with anyway, you on that. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so I was looking for a new way to communicate research findings. And then to answer your question here, finally, the, <laughs> it was last year, uh, I was on vacation with my family in Zagreb in Croatia. It's down okay. by the, the Mediterranean. Um, and uh, we went to the Museum of Broken Relationships. Wow, <laughs> that's different. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> powerful though, wow. Very, you gotta Google this museum, check it out. Uh, there's one, there's a, an, um, sort of an extension of that museum huh. in, 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 in Los Angeles. But um, <clears throat> this museum just, it blew my mind. They had, um, the theme is abstract, broken relationships, and they, they, they had, I mean, physical sort of objects that represented the broken relationships along with stories, short little interesting stories. And I just like, I don't even like museums. They're, most, of them, <laughs> most of them are boring. They but are boring. But you're a curator for a while. Isn't that, isn't that ironic? <laughs> that's purpose, I mean, man. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> and, I just think it's, I think it's funny because I, I just knew when I saw that museum, I just knew that I'm going to open a museum and I didn't think about all the, you know, <laughs> the ramifications <laughs> of that. Um, but yeah, that was sort of the Eureka moment right there. Wow. Wow. And that's actually part of a creative process right there. You know, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You have an idea, you don't know what to do with it. It sort of boils on the back burner in your head and then, by um, exposing yourself to stimuli that you're not used to, um, voila, it's a, you're great. I hadn't thought of it exactly like that, but you're absolutely right. Thanks. <laughs> so would you consider yourself an innovator? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely innovative when it comes to uh, the things that I do because I just, I'm too much of a novelty junkie, you know? Right. I got to get my dose of, of novelty <laughs> and, and, and excitement. Uh, so in that sense, yes. But when you, if you think about innovation in terms of um, applying creativity to make money, that's, I'm not ex as good at that as I am at just doing crazy stuff. So for me, there's a, there's a gap between uh, doing fun projects, and, which I've done for the past, you know, I don't know, 10 10 years or so at doing that and then actually commercializing that those ideas because i don't i'm not as interested in the sort of the maintaining the business aspect of cool ideas um you have a great cool idea anyway so <laughs> thank you <laughs> i love it i love it so so how did so you're um i was looking at your bio and so are you from the U.S. or did, how did you get to Sweden? Like, how did that, like, transpire, you know? Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm uh, ra- I was raised in uh, Northern California. Yeah, that's what you were saying. <clears throat> and then I, m- my mother's Icelandic, so I moved ah, to Iceland okay. after 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 high school, and um, yeah, met a Swedish girl, moved back to California, and then she couldn't stand California, so we moved to Sweden, and here I am. <laughs> well, awesome. I'm glad you're there because I'm, I'm having a great time talking to you. So what, um, so I also was, was looking and, and I noticed like when I looked at the website, you guys actually, you have like 70 different items or how, how do you go about identifying what to put, what, like, how do you go about identifying the failures, the best failures to put into the, to the museum, you know, like do you rate uh, it, like. How do you find them? <laughs> uh, well, the first, the first sort of 10 or 15 items were easy. Uh, mm. Just Google uh, innovation failures, you know. Um, and then there's all these lists and articles about, you know, the biggest tech failures of the, of the early 2000s. Or, there's all these. Wow, okay. Stuff. So um, that was easy. The first, like I said, finding the first 10 or so um, um, exhibits, uh, and then and then then the next step is to try to get them. You know, buy them on on you know uh, Craigslist and all kinds of different classified sites. You know, in Sweden and China and the states. Wow, um, you do a lot of research. That was a lot of that was a lot of work. I mean, it's probably half of the work is figuring out, like you said, where which items to have at the, on the exhibit, and the other half of the work is actually trying to get a hold of them because that's not that's not easy, uh, hmm. and um yeah but then once once the the, you know as the the exhibit grew it becomes more and more difficult to find good examples and this is where it's been so awesome to have the the global sort of uh, media attention yeah you were on c uh was it (laughs) cnn or something like that you were on it's been on cnn abc cbs are coming next week um wow zero last yes day before yesterday chinese state television was here so it's gotten a lot of attention what do you think is the draw like why why do you think there's so much of a interest in this particular museum in this particular topic i think um the location of the museum is irrelevant, um, other than it's a city in southern Sweden that doesn't otherwise get much attention. Hmm. Uh, but I think the, and this is just my speculation, this is just my take on it, and that is that um, the whole message of the museum uh, resonates with individuals because they, they're also, just like me, they're tired of the the force being force fed success stories. So we, we all, we, I think we've got it wrong where, I mean, success stories can really, they can inspire us. I mean, I get inspired when I see, you know, read about or see somebody who's been successful in, in, in an aspect of life that I also want to um, develop. Right. But, but it, it's gone too far. We're for, it's, we're, it's crammed down our throats. Like you have to be successful with your money. You have to have sex a certain number of times a week, and you got to do this. <laughs> you got, you have your kids have to be. I don't know. There's all these criteria. Just criteria for what success is. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody, everybody pushing these different uh, sort of uh, agendas. They are always selling something, right? This is and, true. And I mean, I'm, I'm a consultant. I sell my hours to help companies become more innovative. So of course, I want, I w- it's in my interest that companies understand that they should be investing in, in, in consultants. I mean, right. in, that, in that term. But, but when it comes to the success, I think, I think it's gone overboard and people are tired of it. You know, I agree with you because what I think one of the biggest problems with success is we, 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 I mean, just the way that our history is designed, typically, what do we focus on? How great someone is, but they don't, but greatness comes in the form of the failures Absolutely. that are required to get to that, to that end point. So where I feel like we go wrong is we, we, like you said, we glorify, we glorify the in end product or the innovation, but we don't think about the failure that got exactly. us there. Exactly. It just doesn't make sense. Exactly. So you have like this distorted view of what success is 
you know, and, and I think these younger generations want it yesterday, but they yeah. don't realize sometimes that you have to hustle, sweat, and you may be crying sometimes when you're trying <laughs> to achieve these dreams and these visions. Yeah, and even when you work hard at try, and you're smart and you've got the right connections and all that good stuff, despite that, you're more likely to fail than be successful. Um, so That's accept true. that and then, okay, I fail and then move on, you know, um, instead of seeing, there's a great quote. Um, I can't remember who it's by, so That's I'll okay. take credit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man, I just can't remember. The, anyway, you can find out. Um, it, the, the quote is, failure is a bruise. It's not a tattoo. Mm. I like that because it really sums up failure. It hurts. It's a bruise. But that bruise is only temporary, whereas a tattoo you're stuck with for life. That's very powerful. That's yeah, true. I like, I like, I like that because if we if we can actually understand it that way, we can see that you know let's let's be less afraid of of, of failure, and you know connect reconnecting to our what we talked about in the beginning with um of choosing sort of being more proactive and choosing what you work with and how you work, mm -hmm. uh, if you're in a, in a position to be able to do that, um, if you're enjoying what you're doing or it's meaningful then does it actually matter that much if you fail a few times? Like, no, then it's no. okay. You're enjoying the process. Uh, you're learning throughout the process. And then if the end results are not, you know, deviate from your, from your expected sort of outcome, isn't, you know, it's okay to experience a few of those on your way. But if we're sort of hell bent on immediate success and, you know, believing the, uh, the 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 brainwashing going on around us like you just have to think the right thoughts and you're successful right um, yeah and, and if and if, you, and if you can sort of let go of that then it, it doesn't have to be that bad and as long as nobody dies and as long as you don't cause suffering by your failure i don't want the bus driver to be like you know i'm gonna <laughs> you around and then he wrecks and kills people that's right. not cool that's that's right. that's acceptable but if the bus driver feels like he uh, wants to try to make his omelet in the morning with some something else in it, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, go for it, man. <laughs> I hear fun. you. I hear uh, you on that. Kill anybody. That's you know, I, I I like your quote too because it makes me think of a uh, the concept of a beginner's mind. So with children, they don't worry about failure. They don't even know when they failed. We only we learn that we failure through being socialized that yeah, this is yeah. a failure but yeah. kids will innovate all day long and it's like i think sometimes we have to go back to that childhood state maybe we just need a time out you know yeah. sometimes yeah. when we start thinking like that that we're we're you know we're not innovative <laughs> enough i so, agree <laughs> so what um how do you think failure and innovation are important to the the world of work and life just um, in general yeah, well, um, I'll skip the innovation one because okay. if you look at any 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 sort of uh, surveys or anyone that's tried to sort of uh, understand the role of innovation uh, in today's business, it's it's crucial. Uh, any company mm. that's not innovative is is soon not going to exist any longer. Um, that's very period. true. So that's the, uh, when it comes to um, like sort of luck. I think I'd like to I'd like to add so when it comes to creativity learning from failure and 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 more importantly accepting failure is is key it's not and it's an essential part of of progress but I also think that um this failure when we if you look at other parameters like employee engagement that you've worked with um it when when you're in a situation where you're doing everything to not mess up it's, yes. You know, you, you've you've had jobs like that. I've had jobs. Oh like man, that. Yeah. you're on like, your okay, I just pins don't, and needles. <laughs> don't don't screw up now, right? Um, that is not a work situation or environment that's conductive to employee engagement, happiness, or any of the parameters that surround sort of a well-being at work. So, sure, we don't want you to mess up and destroy all our inventory or cause you know 
pain or suffering to somebody. Yeah, but let's 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 sort of tone down this whole. Um, um, uh, I mean, certain failures, yes, they have to be consequences, yes. That's I mean, I'm not saying and I'm not glorifying failure, but let's let's have let's have a, a good look at it and treat failure you know, at its true value. If somebody messes up an omelet, it's not a big deal. <laughs> right. If somebody you know, drives a bus off a cliff, it's a big deal. So let's, let's see, there's small failures that, that um, are not, you know, catastrophic. And then there's big failures. And let's, let's focus on, let's focus on learning from these small failures so that we can avoid these big failures. Right. So what you're saying then is the, the key to failure is really failing minimally. Small. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that you can maximize the opportunities to be successful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 mm. it, that, that's true for us as individuals, and it's also true for for organizations. That if you fail, in, you know, um, sm- I can't say it's fail small, like, right? Right. Fail when when it when it's not a matter of life or death, or it's not a matter of your your health or your 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 relationship or something else that's important to you. Um, um, fail in the small areas of life and learn from it and refine who you are and your skills, uh, then it's, it's, it's pretty good chances that you'll be able to avoid many of these big failures that you can't live with. So fail efficiently. Fail efficiently and learn from it. I've, I've thought about it when it comes to relationships. When, um, so relationships are interesting because they're so hugely complex, right? There's so many right. variables at play. And and there's no way, there's no manual on how to live a happy life uh, in, in that res- regard. And um, the only way to, to, to learn is actually to try new things. And That's then see what true. works and what doesn't work for you in, in that context. And if, you know, if we get um, feedback or criticism or whatever from our, our partner or our kids, um, it's a chance. I mean, if we say, okay, you know, I messed up. Mm, let me see what I can learn from this. Um, then, then I can, and I can learn from it and adapt my sort of uh, behave, my behavior in a way that's meaningful for my context right here and now that no book can help you with. Right. Um, it, it, I, I just think we have so much to learn from. It's a shame that we always look for these successes when there's not much there in the more often than not, the success stories don't really give us, they distract us from our own sort of failures. They, they can inspire us. If, 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 unlike me, I just get sick of them, but some people are <laughs> inspired by them. Um, uh, but there's not really much learning uh, going on there. That's true because if you think about, I mean, you know this already, but you think about any, any creative, any great individual, Michelangelo, you know, uh, Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, we can go on, the list can go on and on and we focus on them being so talented, but they probably failed over and over and over and over again to make those masterpieces, what they were. So for sure, for sure. sure. So that's, that's very profound. I really, I'm, I really appreciate your, your thoughts on, on this topic. And I can't wait till other people (laughs) are viewing this because this is such a big, big deal i think in the workplace and in in our lives i mean like i said it's probably the biggest thing that we deal with in in any aspect of our life it really is yeah i think there's so much to to gain from it that um i'm willing to yeah i'm willing to dedicate a few years of my life to it for sure Mm. that is awesome so let me ask you this um how would you what like why would you encourage people to come to the to the museum of failure um i think i think okay so sure you can read stories about it uh you can watch uh, videos on the museum of failure and then you'll get the basic idea i mean you don't actually need to come to the museum to get the graphs the the idea of it but what i find really interesting is most of us I mean, I know I do, and I'm assuming you do. We sit, we sit in front of these screens all day long, right? Yes. So 
It's yes. a screen here. It's a screen on your phone, and it's a television screen. Um, and um, we, that's where we get. That's where we consume all our information. And uh, what's actually quite refreshing is to uh, have to move <laughs> to to physically get someplace. It, I'm with it, you on that. It costs you time. It costs you money. You're making an investment. It's not that enjoyable to be at an airport or stuck in traffic or whatever it costs you to get there. Um, and then you have an experience with, you know, either on, alone or with people, with friends, family, or just with other strangers in the museum. Mm -hmm. And there's something special. I, 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 it's, the museum's only been open for almost two weeks. And... Um, it's just something cool that happens when you walk around in a somewhat quiet sort of, uh, it's not religious, but it's almost like sort of this semi-sacred area. It's a, it's a museum. You go there, you, you, you speak quietly, you read, you understand, you can discuss with, your, with, with, your, with other visitors, your friends there, what's, you know, what do you like, you know, what, what did we learn from this, what was cool about this, what's... Is there something wrong? Do I know more about this story than the curator of the Museum of Failure? I should tell him about <laughs> it. Uh, um, there's, every, there's all kinds of things that happen that you, never, you would never get that with you know, looking at this on your screen. It sounds like um, it peaks all your, learn, your senses for learning, you know, it, and it, it makes you more self-aware because I think that's – that's a huge problem. Most people, they're not even aware. Maybe it, maybe it triggers some, some failures that you've had in your past that are holding you back from yeah. taking that next we, step. I don't know, but we've got, you're right. We've got, we've got a, on that note, we've got a, uh, we call it a failure confession booth. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's, it's that is this, awesome. It's this room. It's not a very big room. There's a, two or three chairs in there. And, you go inside, and when you're done with the museum, you go in, you write written in the guest book and all that, and then you you go into this this booth, close the door, you know, and then it's quiet in there, and then there's little colorful pieces of paper there with colorful tape, and it's and then the instructions are confess a failure. <laughs> uh, and then you confess it, and then you take the okay. little piece of paper with you outside outside of the room and tape it up to the wall. So we've got, we've probably got, I don't know, probably 300 failures all over the, it's, it's covered in two entire walls. So that's very therapeutic. Uh, that's yeah, very it's therapeutic. Of, it's You're cool giving because, them the, yeah, it's cool. It's fun. It's cool. It's some of the wow. stories are sad. Some are funny. Some are just confusing. Uh, <laughs> But the, the cool thing about it is that there's something there. Like, we're, we're all human. We're, we all fail, right? And now we know that even these brand name companies also fail. Um, we're in it together. We're in the same boat. Um, it's all good. Wow. That's, um, it, it, it just sounds like there's, you've taken all the different things, the nuances of your, your own experiences, maybe even some of your own personal failures, and you've yeah. kind of made that a place, you know, a safe place for people to come and let their failures go. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. I need to go there and, uh, you know, <laughs> write on your wall as well, you know. I'll and, buy, and I'll buy a something. big... I buy a big uh, uh, a box of paper and, and it's some extra pens before you come, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of them, man. And I mean, I, I'll probably keep on failing. What about what about the technology? You know, the email today just getting to you. <laughs> yeah. What a what yeah. a major I'm failure. Not gonna, I'm not going to say anything about that. You can do that. <laughs> hey, it's okay. I'm, I'm. It's okay. I got it. I'm confessing. <laughs> so, it's cool. It's cool. Well. Dr. West, I thank you so much for um, just taking the opportunity to, to, to talk to me about this topic. As I said before, it's, it's one that I find, and you, and likely you find too as a clinical psychologist and work, you know, working in the field of work, you find that failure is it's, it's systemic in our society and, and just dealing with people. But if we got over it, man, what would our performance be? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I hope, I, I hope that the, the museum will, you know, do its part to to 
to try to change our attitudes towards failure. I mean, we need to. We don't have it. We have we have we have so many huge challenges, whether it's the environment or uh, in Europe we have the integration issues with with um, you know at least Sweden and several other countries in Europe have have, have accepted a large amount of immigrants. Uh, mm. Great, but wait, they have to. They can't live in the forest. They have to be integrated with society. Right. Nobody. Nobody knows how to solve that. Um, wow. That's an issue where, you know, and that's a, it's a very complex issue, just like the environment, like um, uh, global warming. And if we are not willing to, if we don't have the courage to fail, then we're not going to be able to solve these huge problems. That's so, very true. Wow. Like, I, really, I, really want, I really want people to get it through their heads that we have to be, allow ourselves to fail. And we have to allow the government, we have to allow the, NGOs, we have to allow companies, give them that freedom to take meaningful risks. Mm. And, and that, that can lead us forward. Mm. Well, Dr. West, thank mm. you so much for taking the time to talk to me about the, the, the Museum of Failure. We talked about creativity. We talked about innovation. And I think bottom line is this is a huge issue that we really need to focus on maybe changing the global mindset of failure. And um, yes. bottom line is everybody needs to come to the Museum of Failure so they can get their minds more focused on being innovative through that process. So Sounds great. Yes, I will, come to Sweden. <laughs> I will. I will. So thanks so much, and I will, um, I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>